Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the day's task. Today's task is going to be replacing that fan. It has plagued me for years as being too noisy, not moving enough air, and it's kind of gross. So we're gonna fix all of that and replace it today. So I have taken the time to lay out all of the parts that I will need, the adapters, the new fan itself, and its hanging bracket. I probably won't need that because it is a retrofit that is for new construction. And then I've gone through the manual a couple times just to verify that I'm installing it the right way. The fan that I'm installing today is the Panasonic Whisper Choice. The reason I bought this one is because it has the lowest sound of any fan that I could find at the local Home Depot or like Lowe's store. Um, and that was the big thing that I'm going for. This fan's rating is 0.3 and it is one of the quietest fans on the market that I found. It also can move a large volume of air, which is one of the things I needed it to do as well. I will link this fan in the description if you want to purchase it online and retrofit it for your own bathroom. But I will say this, the more quiet the fan is, the more expensive it is. And I didn't go to the highest quality fan that I possibly could. They have some with built-in LEDs even with Bluetooth speakers, that was a little bit wild. But you can go for any array of fan that you kind of want. Just note, the more expensive, the better quality. It is one of those things that you spend and get what you pay for. First things first, I wanna prep the area. The bathroom I'm working in, I wanna move this curtain. I would like to move this rug, clean up the trash can, anything that is going to hold the insulation that is for sure going to fall out of my ceiling. I'm a little bit bummed that I'm doing this right now because I just two, three weeks ago redid the insulation in my ceiling. So there's another foot and a half sitting on top of this fan that is bound to come down and that lowers the R value in that small location. But because this is such a problem and the bathroom is not venting anymore, we've got to fix it. We have to mitigate it or else we're going to start getting mold in here. You can tell your bathroom is not venting well when the walls start to sweat when you're in the shower. Your mirror will most likely get foggy. But if your walls are sweating so much that you can scrub them down, that's nice for one time cleaning. You don't want to be doing that all the time because mold will definitely grow. It just so happens that on the back side of this curtain is a plastic curtain that we are going to be replacing it with. So I'm going to take the whole thing down now anyway. When you're removing this, there's two little gator clips behind it. You just pinch them and they'll slide right out on both sides. Same for installing it, pinch, slide in. So one of the issues I know I'm going to be running into is how I connected this. I don't want to tear out any of this paint or anything like that because I want this to look nice. I don't want it to look like it's been torn apart. So I really have to take my time and figure out where the lines are, score them, mark it, and then find out where the screws are. I believe there's some right here and here holding it inside of a wood frame. These are the tools that I'm gonna start with for the job. I think I may need more, but this is a good base for right now. I have my drill, which I know I'm going to be doing some unscrewing of bolts and then retightening of bolts. I know I'm gonna need this knife to cut and clean some areas. This is a good universal screwdriver that I really like. Klein is the brand. And then some tin snips for outside to put the ventilation system in. I also have a tick tracer for my electrical work. I don't want to do is try and unscrew this and let it pull down until I get all of these edges all the way clear at least because if not you will get tear out on your sheetrock on your paint on everything you don't want that you want to cover this up and make it look like the fan you're putting in today has always been there and if you get that tear out you won't you'll have to do other body work it's not a big deal but I want to avoid that so just as any safety precaution when you're working with anything that deals with electricity go turn the breaker off make sure it's off and that is why I have this tool, so that I can test that the power is off. If it's glowing, it's on. If it's not glowing, it's off. That's the box right there, the wiring box that I'm gonna go into. You've gotta undo that screw and then do the undo the wiring nuts that you'll see in there. So the wiring is all exposed. That's called the junction box that you get into. And I take my tick tracer and put it on all the wires around here. It's not glowing at all, which means none of these are live or hot. So I'm okay to undo those wire nuts and I'm not gonna get shocked. Wiring is all the way undone. The new fan is unboxed and ready to go. And I've got this all set up to be wired in. But I did just do a dry fit to see if it would fit a pin. It does fit, but when it tries to pivot, 
it's bumping along this little bit of line right here. This fan is about two and a half inches taller, so I have to account for this swing room when it's sliding up into here. So I'm going to take off just a little bit of this sheetrock. Shouldn't really change anything or affect it. I recommend using a keyhole saw on this instead of a razor blade because razor blade, you'll have a lot of momentum. You'll end up gashing the ceiling somehow. But this, you just kind of slightly saw at it. It does make more dusty of a mess, but you'll end up with a cleaner and more exact cut when you're done. So that's my choice. Fan is fitted, we're ready to go. I'm ready to put it up there, but I don't want to put it up there just yet. I really want to divert the path a different direction. I want to get it out of the house as fast as possible, and the fastest way is through the E right there that we're next to. The old way kind of ran it through the house, through the up attic area, and I didn't love that. Um, I felt like it never really exhausted very well. Maybe it was quality of fan, but I kind of think it was just too long of a shot, and it just kept moisture where I didn't really want it. So I want to go the fastest route out, which is over that eave, and we're gonna go and cut a hole in that now. So I looked in my bathroom and I knew that this edge of this window was about where the edge of the fan was going to be. I know I've got a stud somewhere along here and somewhere along here, so I know right here should be a good area, and that's where we're gonna work through. Well, it's not pretty, but it will do. It at least gives me an idea of where I've gotta go through. I do know I have a full piece of wood backing this that I've gotta get through as well. If by chance you have a hole saw that is big enough to do that, don't ever do it on this tin. You will shred it and make a disaster of a mess. The key is to just punch a hole. Lightly, I'm gonna punch a couple of holes. So just make a small hole and then cut it with tin snips the rest of the way. I also recommend if you're ever working with tin, wear gloves. Those are edges are razor sharp and they will cut you to pieces. All right, I've got the hole finished in the eave of the attic. Now I'm going to be feeding in the accordion tube that's gonna feed out all that line. I have my ducting here now. So now there's a vent that'll connect. I don't wanna do that just yet. I wanna get the fan connect it on the inside and turn it on. If there's any residual insulation in here, I want it to blow it out while there's nothing obstructing the flow of it. In the manual, they kind of give you an order of operations, but when you're retrofitting, you really have to look at it and analyze it yourself. What and how you're going to do this. I think I'm going to hook up my ducting first and then my wiring, and then I'll feed it all the way up in and bolt it in and it should be good to go. On this fan, I did double check to make sure that constraining this down to a four inch from a six inch would be okay. And according to the manual, bringing it down to four inch maintains the same CFM. That means the air volume that's flowing through this fan and it doesn't affect it in any way. So that's a pretty good deal. I also bought these clamps to hold this around this and then back to this. Now that that is tight, I don't want to dangle this on the weight of this because it will tear that. I also don't want to dangle it on the weight of the wire, so I'm playing the game of balance with one man here. Two people would make this job easy, but if you're a little bit coordinated, you can do it on your own, and that's kind of what I want to show is that these are DIY projects that you can do on your own and maybe with the help of your spouse. All right, that's really hard to kind of see the different coloration, but black is the black, white is to white, and copper is to green, which is the ground. That electrical box is all the way sealed back up. That feels pretty secure. And now that the fan is hung, simply put your cover on. Perfect, and now it's just time to button up outside and we're all good to go. I am, since there's so much dust in here and I know the fan's fine, I'm gonna turn the fan on. That is a pretty quiet fan. You don't really hear the motor running. It's not too loud. All of the products that I've used in this video, I'll link in the description down below. And if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. And if you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of our content. If you wanna be notified of any new videos that are coming out, hit the bell by the subscription button so you receive all notifications from this channel. We'll see you guys next time.